We're doing Funny Father Fridays. I'm starting a new. Jason doesn't know about it. See if it hits. I want your comments. It's father advice. Oh, no. And I got my son on the show today. Give, what is a couple of things that, like, Dad says? Okay. Um, keep your keys in two places. It goes in your pocket or in your dresser, right, or your drawer. How many times have I said that in, in your lifetime? Countless. You couldn't even it's, count them. No, I couldn't you can't even. Even, even mm-hmm. Peyton just got a car, and I go, where are your keys go? He goes, Dad, oh, my gosh. It goes in your pocket. Or it goes on your dresser. So I just reach for it. Two places, because you don't have my keys. keys. No, you, but I got one of those tile things, so you can call it, and it rings. It's perfect. Is there another father funny? Um, the phone, the cracked phone. Oh, my God. I just saw it right now, but he's he's married. He's got his own man. I looked at it, and I went, just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard a, I, you, you, like, what? grunted, and I knew exactly. I knew exactly. What? I was like, what's it? <laughs> Why can't you take care I of I won't fix it until I've it. never seen his phone <laughs> with a clear screen, ever. I buy hey, it like this, actually. We'll be right back. Welcome to Wake Up, a daily Bible study from Pastors Scott and Jason Anderson, a morning scripture with your morning coffee, brought to you by Living Word. We encourage you to wake up with us every morning by watching us on YouTube. Visit wakeuptv.tv or search Daily Bible Study on YouTube. All right. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Lakin. This is my son. Jason's on vacay. And we got a scripture for your day. We're going to pray over your day. And um, we're talking about relationships. And um, this whole series that I'm doing is really trying to get in the forefront of our mind. When we wake up in the morning with relationship on our mind, it changes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So when I became a when Lakin came into the world, I had to reshift everything in my life and go. Okay, the relationship ultimately is the goal. Having my son when he gets married, still coming over. He comes over all the time. Still having a great relationship and friendship. So when I pair it with relationship in mind, it changes how I come down in the morning. Dad's too happy. Too yeah. happy. Yeah. He's too, <laughs> he's too, I don't know. Like too joyful. Baylor's yeah. now my, my teenager at home. He's like, oh my gosh, dad, can we just not be happy for three seconds? <laughs> no, I gotta be happy. Yeah. I gotta be happy, dad, in, in life. And so life is better when we're developing, creating great relationships. And so I want this to be on your mind. What's our scripture today? So our scripture today is 1 Samuel twenty three seventeen. It is, um, it's between Jonathan and David. And so Jonathan is the next heir to the throne. He's Saul's son. He's the right birthright. But what, what Jonathan does in this scripture is, is I believe, um, a, a, a testament or a, it shows us how we should handle our relationships with other people. And so it says, uh, 23, don't be afraid, he said. This is, this is Jonathan talking to David. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. Um, and then it goes on to say, the two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horish. But the, the, the real thing is Jonathan chose people over promotion for himself. I love that. He ch- because yeah. that's not what we're taught. We're mm-hmm. trying to get, 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 get. And I have to step on people's backs. I may have to take credit for things that I didn't do. And I'm going to have to. And when you have that mentality, then you become your promoter rather than God. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. And especially in, in uh, it's, it's crazy in the workplace when, um, you know, the, a career is, is about promotion. You want to get to the top. You want to be there. But, but what's best for, for the kingdom and God's kingdom is being able to say, no, I love you and I think you could do a better job than me, so I'm going to lift up the 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 workplace in our project above my how I look in my promotion. Right. See, and it's it's uh, the difference. And see, great relationships are birthed out of not me, but you. That's what relationships about. Relationships are all about other people, and. The Bible is very clear that whatever you sow, you'll reap. Luke 6 talks about, he says, hey, when you give to those that hate you, when they try and take, he's, he's, he's putting all, he says, then your reward will be great. So when it's not about me taking or giving back the bad that's given, but instead I'm giving and I'm promoting others, then what I sow is what I begin to reap as I begin to promote you. And I may keep, man, I go to the boss, I'm like, man, that, guy, that guy's awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, you wouldn't believe what he did. He did this, this, and this, and this. And you begin to promote others. All of a sudden now, you're going to get what's called a harvest, and God's going to find a way to promote you. Well, how's that happen? Don't know. But I do know that God always comes through. Mm-hmm. And now it wasn't my works that got me up the ladder. It was God's works. Yeah, yeah. I see this in like a uh, worship ministry a lot um, where, where I really like this song. I'm really passionate about this song. 
but we get to practice and we start we start singing it and I just God puts it on my heart you know um, the other worship leader is so anointed in this song and you can tell and she's passionate about it and you go you're supposed to lead this song like I would love to lead this song I love this song but 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 God's going to move this weekend if you lead it. Will you please lead it? And the 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 reaction that you get and the the I feel like the loyalty and the passion that it brings out of people is is it, it turns out better than if if we would have done it ourselves. And we're, and all areas are are, are are can get a little crazy, but worship can be that where hey, I want to have the singing time and I mm. want and what happens when I take that kind of stuff, then I bring an atmosphere of take into the world. When you go into the workplace and you take credit and you're take right, then all of a sudden I've changed the atmosphere yeah. to a take. And it is a me atmosphere. But when you can you by yourself can go into work and begin to give and give credit and be able to uplift and begin to build up. And all of a sudden the atmosphere of the entire office begins to change to a building up. This is when you see some of the great football teams and, and sports teams out there. You got the teams that, that they're, they're like 3 and, and 13, and you got the guys like, hey, I'm the number one receiver. Nobody's good as me, man. If they give me the ball more, I'll be better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then you, you watch the great championship teams that have, have won the Super Bowl, and they're the ones that said, we did. Hey, mm. it, did you see the running back? Right, The quarterback's talking about the running back. Man, mm. I couldn't have done it without the, the line. The mm. line is the one that made... Yeah, I know you're talking about how great I did it. I couldn't have done it mm. without the linemen that were blocking for me, without the yeah. running back being able to run. And see, it's the, a championship team is a team that is working and operating through God's love. Yeah, and I think also... Uh, um, this, the story of Jonathan David can also relate back to Jesus in us because Jesus came down. He's the king, and, and he sacrifices himself so that we can be kings and priests on the earth. Ooh, that gave me a chill. And, it's really good. And so, so every time you come on the show, you always give me something I never thought of. <laughs> I never thought of that. I don't, I, now I'm angry. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually angry at myself. You stupid it's, crack yeah. phone. I'm angry at that too. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's it's. I think that um, and 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 with Jonathan and David, it just is such a testament of of if we treat people, no matter who you are, as 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 if we know, like we know that God and Jesus sent His Son to die for you. We we would wouldn't. How many people would you choose over promotion? Right. If you knew that he di- he died for everybody, he died for you. He died for you. No he matter died what. for you, and your witness and your light to people and your love to people will always take you much further than self promotion. Self promotion never gets you anywhere, but love will get you everywhere that you want to go in this lifetime. Being others conscious. Was Jesus come down? Was he all about himself? No. Everywhere he goes. He was about making the people around him better. He was about depositing into every single person in his life. And if we could walk like Jesus, you'd be amazed at at what you do. I know in my own life, I've had projects and books and things that I wanted to promote. Yeah. I want to to promote. Yeah, Yeah, it's a project. And you can even get to sometimes a pastor's conference. And pastor's conference, it's it's cute sometimes because everybody's trying to self-promote. Yeah. Right? Who can I talk to? And who can? Who's got the biggest yeah. church that I can? I want to go talk over this thing. And man, I would leave those things just just annoyed at everything. But then I I started going. It's not about me promoting anything. It's about me just simply loving whoever God puts in front. So I got a guy. Mm. He's got a little church of fifty. And I begin to love on him. Mm. Right? And he's like, Hey, come on out and preach at my church. And we get a great relationship. And then there's a guy right next door, and he's got a church, and, and he has me out. And then you see these churches begin to explode. Now they're four hundred, five hundred people. Now I'm going out to big churches. Yeah. It was about love. Yeah, it was self promotion. It wasn't the self promotion didn't didn't get you. Never got me anywhere. It's funny because Jesus had such a following. Um, There were actually other other uh, people starting ministries at the same time. Out of all the ministries, it was Jesus that took off. That's a lot of competition. That's a lot of competition. Oh, yeah. And and, in fact, he was. You know, scholars say that he might not have even had the biggest one when he first started out. He was actually the underdog. Yeah. And and it's funny because I think it's in Mark where he actually he does a miracle and then he says, "Don't tell anybody about it." (laughs) <laughs> don't don't recognize and in I fact like but that. even 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 though he said don't tell anybody the guy was so overjoyed by the love he felt that he went and told other people wow yeah and so it's actually the the lack of self promotion that that grew. yeah you don't see Jesus promoting himself Mm-mm. you see Jesus being Jesus with whoever 
comes into this world. And that's what I challenge you to do. We're going to pray over your day. Dear Father, Lord, we ask that you just bless our day. Lord, you help us to walk in love. That if I can help other people be successful, that you'll find a way to make me successful. When I try and take success, it never seems to work out. But what if I just gave success? Gave success to everybody that is around me. Mm. You will find a way for that harvest to be more than I can contain, Lord. Give them a great day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hey, enjoy this teaching. To relationships. They say that most joy, happiness, and peace in the same manner can be linked back somehow to relationships. If you think about probably your top 20 memories of your life, top 20, most of them, if not all of them for some of us, would be tied somehow to relationships. It was the first kiss, first boyfriend or girlfriend. It might have been a prom. It might have been a, uh, a, a could have been your wedding day. It could have been the, when you brought a life into, into the world, your, your child w- was born. There, it could have been a Disneyland trip with the family and the kids or even as a child, uh, experience with grandma or grandpa and they took you out and fishing or throwing the ball with dad or there's some memory in your life when you think about the top 20 that you can link back to a special moment within a relationship. In the same way, your top 20 bad memories usually be tied to relationships. It could have been the person that stabbed you in the back, or you found out somebody talked and said a bunch of lies about you, that somebody in your family, there was a loss of a loved one. There could have been a divorce, a breakup, any of these things Relationship seems to be tied to where our emotions are. God designed you for relation. Not to, God didn't design man to go get a job and to work the field. That's not what God's purpose was. He said, man, in the garden, I want a relationship. And then God said, all right, this isn't enough. I got to give, man's not good by himself, so I got to give him woman. And there you have it. There is relationship. Jesus was asked of all the laws and the rules of the Bible, sum it up, and Jesus said what? He said, love. The Bible Life is about love. Love God, love others, love yourself. And so life is about relationships. And we're going to learn whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're a teenager, whether you're junior high, whatever place that you are in life, you need to be developing great relationships that become these lifelong feeders, in a sense, to your peace, joy, and your fulfillment and happiness in life. We are... A family that watches Survivor. I don't know. Anybody else out there watch Survivor? We got some Survivor people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love him. I'm going to be honest with you. I know it's a whole bunch of crazy, but I love him. Right? We watch all 38 or 9, I don't know where they're at now, 38 seasons we watch them. It's like a, so on our vacation, like we save up the last season and then every night we watch an episode of Survivor. Find out how a whole bunch of crazy people do relationships, amen? And so they put them on the, if you don't know what Survivor is, basically they're all competing to be the last one standing by backstabbing each other and uh, doing a whole bunch of unbiblical things. <laughs> Lying, cheating, that's why I love it so much. And so... <laughs> <laughs> now that I say it out loud, it sounds like an anti-church. Like it sounds so backwards from my, my series here. <laughs> so they put them on this ad and they give them barely any rations, a little bit of rice. And most of the people, they lose 20, 30, 50 pounds during this time of just being extremely uh, hungry. Now they do have like these challenges and, and uh, if you win them, you get like cheeseburgers and french fries and pizza and food and they get excited. I mean, of course, they're, they're, they're starving, they're hungry. But because I've had relationship on my mind as we were watching uh, this season, I forgot that every season they do something special, and they bring one loved one out for each of the people that are competing in this. Now, when they win the cheeseburgers, yeah, they're excited. But when they find out that it's a loved one that is coming out, you'll see them drop to their knees and just weep and cry. You will see them just, just, just every, all of them are crying and weeping and so excited. You'll see people in certain times, they'll give up food. They have food, get food. They'll, for, to be able to have a moment with a loved one, they'll literally give up some advantages in the game, make some horrible decisions that cost them possibly a million dollars just to have an afternoon with their husband, with their wife, with their 
brother, their sister, their, their, their friend, whoever might be in that, that they fly out there. And you see in there that there is such a need, greater than hunger, greater than any emotion and thing that you say, a need for love. A need for relationships at the cost of things. And here's the problem. The world does not teach us how to have great relationships. They don't. There's nothing in school. There's nothing going on. School, if anything, teaches you how to have bad relationships, how to take, 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 right? You watch the Kardashians. How many people know that you're not learning a whole lot of relationships from the Kardashians? And as I said it out loud, you're not learning a whole lot from Survivor on relationships either. People Magazine isn't giving you cool tips. Hollywood, though they may think that they know everything, do not give good relationship advice. How many marriages are you on and you still ain't happy? You got all the money and all the time. You can go anywhere and do anything you want, but you have no happiness because you don't have a godly great relationships in your life. You're searching for something. Come on, somebody. You're searching. But until they find great here and great here, They're going to keep looking in the bottom of a bottle. They're going to keep looking at the end of a, a, what is the marijuana? I don't know. I was trying to come up with a cool marijuana millennial thing. What is that? Like a little, I don't know. Anyway, I missed it. (laughs) Missed the joke. Somebody's going to give me, it says, somebody give me that after this one. I'll use it on the next service. But they're looking for happiness in all of the wrong places. They have no good advice. I was reading an article on the plane and uh, it was just on relationships and, and it, it, the article has said, if you're in the middle of a fight and argument with your, your, your loved one, your spouse, uh, just to ask questions. Just start asking questions because you're trying to find out kind of what's going on and, and where they're at and, and what, you're, what they're thinking and what's going on behind the scenes. And so I'm like, ooh, that's good. And so me and Holly, we're, we're going at it. We're having a good fight. And, and, and we're zinging and zinging. And all of a sudden, this article came to my mind. And I'm like, whew, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? And my mind's like, all right, all right. And so I took a deep breath, and I, I got my question gathered together. Okay, I got, I got to figure out where she's at and what's going on. And I got to have good questions that will help us pull us out of this fight. And so big breath, and I smiled at her, and I, I said, honey, why are you acting so crazy? <laughs> Didn't work, just so you all know. Didn't work at all. (laughs) Questions don't work. The world's advice don't work whatsoever. (laughs) We got to use God's way is what we're going to be doing in this. Right now, we're going to read from Luke 6, and uh, I'm going to do 27 through 38. And I want you to see that in the midst of this, Jesus is giving us relationship advice. He's saying to us, this is how you do relationships. I know the world doesn't do it this way, but this is how you and I need to be doing relationships. So he said, but to those of you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good those who hate you. What are you talking about? That's not what I do to those that hate me. Bless those who curse you. No, 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 no. I was taught to curse those that curse me. Right? You flip me off, I flip you off. Isn't that how? That's the exchange rate. That's what we do. Pray for those that mistreat you. No, I don't do that. I'm going to talk bad about you. I'm going to tell everybody what's wrong with you. I'm going to find a way to get even with you. Pray for them. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other one. And you know which cheek up. And if anyone, someone <laughs> takes your coat, <laughs> do not withhold your shirt from them. So if you take from me, I'm just supposed to give. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs, don't demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that? Isn't that that's so deep? It's easy to love somebody who's nice to you. It's easy to love somebody who's kind. To hear this message in its entirety, visit wakeuptv.tv and click on YouTube. It's easy when somebody says something encouraging to to encourage them back. He's saying, but wait a second, I'm calling Christians to a higher level, but there is a reward when you live at a higher level. That when I begin to not do what you do to me, but instead I do what I need to do in the midst of whatever you're doing in this world. See, when somebody at your high school, somebody in the college says some bad stuff about you, the reaction that the world wants you to adapt to is go say bad things about them. But you freak their world out if you go around and say a whole bunch of good things about them. And what I sow is what I begin to reap in my life. I don't give a curse back for a curse. Come on, some of you teenagers out there. He says, anybody can love when you're loved. Go to the next page. 
Even sinners do that. If you lend to those, expect to be repaid. But he says, verse 35, but love your enemies. Next page for me, Bets. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get back. Then your reward. Somebody say reward. reward. Oh, wait, I like that. When's my reward? It's then. Then your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. See, when I judge, I end up getting judged back. But if I don't judge, then I'm not being judged. If Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive. Man, I sure would like some forgiveness. Yeah, well, you got to forgive first and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you in this life. A good message. Everybody loves this scripture. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And here's what God is saying. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. It's a different way of thinking. It's not what you and I were trained growing up. It's a total flip of our thinking. And that's where we get number one. Uh, Don't throw it up yet. I get to give you uh, a little bit of math today. I know we don't like math, but as, a, a, as somebody who's got a math degree, I got excited when God gave this to me. I'm like, I get to do a little bit of math on Sunday morning. I don't get to do math very, very often. And so number one, write this down. I believe that this is going to be life-changing for you. Number one is called reciprocal. It's the reciprocal. So for instance, you have two-fifths. Throw that up there for me. Two-fifths. Now... That's not even a half. Man, I sure would like to get that back to a whole. Sometimes in our relationships, we're below half, and we're functioning in our, in our, in our marriage. We're functioning as a single person with our friends. We're functioning in high school. We're functioning below whole in our life. How do I get this back to whole? I have to multiply by its opposites. I have to give its reciprocal. It's reciprocal, so throw that up there. Two-fifths times its opposite, which is five halves, takes me back to whole. The Bible from cover to cover, especially the passage we read today, was Jesus saying to you and I, stop giving what people are giving to you, but instead I need you to give the reciprocal. The reciprocal is going to take it back to a wholeness. Wrath, the Bible says in Proverbs that a kind word turns away wrath. Right? The reciprocal of wrath is a kind word. The reciprocal takes it and makes it back to a wholeness. What happens, married couples out there, if your spouse says something mean and you say something mean back? Did the marriage get any closer to wholeness? Or did it get farther away? Wrath to wrath just makes things escalate and get worse. Now watch this. In, in the math world, I'm going to show you a little math. This is fun. When I have two-fifths, and then so you say something mean, and I say something mean, all of a sudden now we're at four twenty-fifths. We're so far away from whole, right? We're so far away even from being half whole, right? This is the point. In our relationships in life, when we return evil for evil, we turn uh, bad word for bad word, we turn somebody discourages us, we discourage them, stress for stress. What we're doing is we're taking our relationships away from the wholeness and we're getting further and further away from God's plan within our relationships. But if I'll just multiply by the reciprocal, is what Jesus says. Somebody takes something from you, you give it to them. You give them something extra. That's the opposite. Somebody wrongs you, the opposite, the reciprocal is I forgive them. They say hurtful things, I pray for them. Everything throughout the Bible is God saying, don't give what you get, but instead make something new and give them something great that is biblical in their life, and you flip their whole world out, right? Your spouse says something mean, and you go, I love you. You're just beautiful and amazing. That's not how this works. You're supposed to say something mean back. You didn't know the game. We have a whole new game. Honey, I know it. You had a hard day. You've been stressed with the kids. I know it. Let me help you with a few little things. And you see that we got ourselves all the way back to being close to wholeness by me simply giving the reciprocal. Somebody discourage you, you build them up. Somebody takes from you, you give to them. That is what life is about, is about you and I being different as children of the king that the world recognizes. Somebody takes credit for something you did at the next staff meeting, give them credit for something they never even had anything to do with. 
to throw her, everybody, everybody don't even know what to do with that. Because in the long line, it doesn't matter about the credit I get down here on earth because God is my great creditor and he will find a way to give me the credit, give me the elevation. He'll build me up. And here's the funny thing. Most of the time, the boss and people around all know who did the work anyway. And we're battling and squabbling over the scraps oftentimes rather than just doing the reciprocal. Isn't this what God did? The world was full of judgment and condemnation and everybody was all in the circle of sin and he said, here's what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give the reciprocal which is grace, love, and forgiveness. Now it breaks the power of sin. See, we get in that condemnation, that sin cycle. We can't break out of that. God says, oh, how do I break out of that as I give them some grace in their life? And as soon as I got that grace that love and that acceptance, it allows me to break forth out of those bonds and those chains of sin in my life and begin to live life that I want to live and that I know that I need to be living. There's a difference in that. He says, hey, the world has got death and no one's going to heaven. So what does he give? He gives the reciprocal. He gives life. See, there is death. I just have to give life. And now we have the opportunity for eternity in heaven. God is a reciprocal God. He gives the opposite. The world says, take We say to give. I've been working on a lot of this stuff, and you'll hear this throughout the series, because I do. There's areas that I I don't do good in. My battleground in life is in the car, if you guys didn't know that about me. That's my battle. So I'm working on that, but this story goes back about 13 uh, years. 13 years ago, Lakin was about 10 years old, Heath was nine, Baylor was six, and little Peyton, our, our baby boy, was three years old. We are going out to get uh, mom her, her birthday gift. We want to, I take the boys out, get your wallets out, we're going to get mom something special. And so I take all the boys out to get her something really nice and something special. And so we were leaving the dollar store, and... Um, <laughs> Just teasing. <laughs> we, went, we went to the mall. I think we were down at Macy's. We got a little perfume and got some stuff. But then I knew that Holly wanted some DVDs. And, of course, we got to get birthday cards. And so we head on down to the Walmart. And uh, so I, I pull into, hell, or into the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. And if you watch through a screen like this right here, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Can you still see me? Even though I got the camo on? I was going to ask. Is it the light? Oh, yeah, it's okay? very hard. Okay, it just sweet, looks like yeah. a face It's on just the going thing. through, yeah. Subscribe. Uh, if you want to watch, uh, watch us on YouTube, text wake up to 84483 or go to wakeuptv.tv. And we're going to, I think we're going to, we're trying to get some shirts and some mugs. Yeah, we mugs, got mugs already. Yeah. Get some headbands. We sold Speedos? Out, didn't you? What do you think, Speedos? Speedos. Oh, wake up. Oh, wake up. <laughs> Dad, wake up. That dad and Speedos is great. Oh, no. Amen. Dad and Speedos. Oh, no. Hey, get in church. Get into God's house this weekend. And, uh, you know, church is a great start to an amazing week. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining us today. Find out more or stay connected with Wake Up at wakeuptv.tv. You can also subscribe to our daily text reminders for Wake Up Daily Bible Study, which includes a direct link to the next day's episode by texting Wake Up, no spaces, to 84483. That's wake up to 84483.